Well, hello there, everyone. Welcome to your morning coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Eric. So this is going to be a daily reading for January uh, 20, uh, excuse me, Monday, January 14th. Um, this is just a general energy reading. This is not specific to anything, love, career, whatever. Um, not specific to any sign either. This is just whatever spirit wants to talk about today. So basically you can think of this as like spirit messages for the day. Yeah, maybe, I don't know. I was thinking of renaming it because not everybody, you know, gets to have coffee with us in the morning, but morning coffee is cute, but I don't know. We'll see. You guys let me know in the description or not in the description, in the comments down below if maybe like daily spirit message or spirit daily, something like that. Ooh, spirit daily. I like that one. I might have a vote on that. Okay. Anyway, um, just to let you guys know a uh, few things. One, I am on Instagram now, so go ahead and follow me at divine underscore conversations. I would love to connect with you there. I am going to be doing some extra readings for Instagram, um, some lives, you know, Instagram TV, something like that. I did some, I did put some stuff up for singles and for soulmates up on Instagram TV. Um, I am planning on going live today. I'm um, just trying to figure out, you know, my footing, which be what's best for me, what fits best. So your engagement there would be incredibly helpful too. You guys let me know which you prefer and we'll get something rolling, yes. And also I am doing an Instagram sale. For those of you who are my followers on Instagram, I'm doing 20% off general freestyle readings, yes. So you can go ahead and follow me on Instagram and um, then shoot me a DM saying that you would like to take advantage of the Instagram sale. Again, that is 20% off general freestyle readings. And those are the readings that I do for the Zodiac monthlies. Speaking of which, I have put up the Zodiac monthlies for mid-January and I'm going to be working on the February ones quite soon. So if you haven't had a chance yet, go ahead and check out the mid-February Zodiac readings. I just, I did just um, publish those yesterday, yeah? All right, guys, so with all of that said, let's get into the messages for today. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for today, Monday, January 14th, 2019. Thank you so much, Spirit. Oh, and then finally, one last little bit of information for you guys. I am back at Om Shanti Bookshop here in the East Village of New York City. I am going to be there every Friday from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. So if you're in the area and you would like to get a reading with me in person or you'd just like to come by and say hi, I recommend it because I'd love to see your beautiful face. Yes? <laughs> okay, here we go. January 14th. Let's see what we've got for the kids. For the kids. Mm -hmm. Monday, January 14th. I'm sure you guys can tell I'm in a much better mood today than I have been in, well, in a while, I guess I would say. Uh. I can see clearly now the rain is gone. Yeah, that's kind of, that's literally what just popped into my head. I, you know, there, lately there has been, we've kind of been, I guess you could, guess, you could say we've kind of been under a little bit of a test lately. Uh-oh, my, my feather. Um, and that test is to keep the faith, okay? And, you know, that came out in the Twin Flame reading. It's been, uh, yesterday, it's been coming out for the Divine Feminine quite a lot. Um, you know, there's been a moment of unsurety, of un uneasiness, you know, we're in this transition between an old life, an old cycle in life and a new cycle in life. And we've been really just having to have to keep the faith and work on our thoughts, work on our minds, work on the nine of swords type of energy on keeping that at bay. So um, me personally, I've been re working really hard at that and it seems to be paying off because 
Um, you know, I've been purging some like uh, some um, lack mentality, which was you know the title of the weekend edition of Morning Coffee this past weekend, and um, so. I, I don't know if any of you, please go ahead and let me know if any of you are feeling differently. If any of you have been working on purging these, this lack of mentality mindset, this doomsday mindset, this inadequacy mindset, um, all and, and a lot of the messages that have been channeled lately from a number of different readers that I've been paying attention to, um, they've been saying that, you know, any people that have been doubting you, trying to hold you back, were skeptical didn't quite believe in you if you're still if you're still doing your thing um luck is going to be changing or you're you know your luck's going to be changing it's going they're they're going to be seeing that well actually that maybe they shouldn't have doubted you um and ooh, whoa i'll try that again um and with that i want to say that um oh man i had something i wanted to say and now i totally lost my train of thought here Oh well. Um, with that, aww. Well, I'm really sad that I lost that because it was pretty good. But never mind. Anyway, so we're all we're all just kind of like plugging along, you know, not not taking shit from anybody, not taking no for an answer necessarily. Not necessarily, you know what I mean? Like that kind of thing. Sitting here putzing with all my stuff. All right. Let's just get into the cards here. <laughs> One more shuffle, and then we'll see what we've got for today. I'm really kind of sad that I lost my train of thought there, but I guess spirit was trying to stop me. All right, here we go, guys. So for Monday, January 14th, let's see what we've got. Monday, January 14th. Ooh. All right, looks like we have it. Woo! Oh boy, that's quite a bit. Oh, all right. Well, underneath the deck, you have the sun. Okay, well, that's quite beautiful. We have, we have a lot of cards here today, guys. So I'm going to try and make this as quick as possible. Seven of Wands, Divine Wisdom, Eight of Pentacles, and the Six of Swords. Okay. We also have the Moon Child and the Three of Wands. And we're going to go here. Ooh. Wow. Queen of Wands, Lovers, and Death. And then over here we have the Empress, Knight of Swords, Two of Cups, and the Four of Pentacles. Wow. <laughs> wow, this is a lot, you guys. This is a whole, whole lot. But I'm going to do my best to read it here. Um... So first, I, I, I'm actually going to start here. The Queen of Wands, the Lovers, and Death. All of these are in reverse. There's definitely a, been a change in the collective. Um, there's definitely been a change in the collective. Now, for some of you, I'm picking up that this is speaking to... Wow, this is speaking to needing to go through some sort of death or transformation for some of you, and that's not being done, okay? Some of you are resisting a transformation with death, um, and this could be, a, you know, you just could talk about a twin flame situation. All right. When well, you know you do have the Queen of Wands, so we would, in that case we would be talking about the Divine Feminine because I do see the Queen of Wands as a depiction of the Divine Feminine, um, as a minor Arcana version of the the Divine Feminine, of which would be represented in the Major Arcana as the Empress, which we do have here on the other side. Now for uh, now this is I am getting a twofold message with these three cards here. For either either it's you're needing to let go or you're needing to go through a transition here, or you have left this transition behind. And for the most part, I'm feeling like you've already left this transition behind. What I'm getting with this, 
death, the lovers, and the queen of wands, you were awakened, you were set on fire, basically, <laughs> which is not a bad thing. I'm just saying you, 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 you know, you were awakened to the twin flame situation or, you know, spiritual, you had a spiritual awakening that was connected to another person that was outside of you, um, which led you within with the lovers. And then you went through this major transformation with death. Okay. But now, now for those of you that have come out of this situation, it's so interesting, the mirroring that's happening with this. On the other hand, on the other side of that, okay, you have the Empress, the Knight of Swords, the Two of Cups, and the Four of Pentacles. All right. And what I'm seeing here is someone in their empress energy okay so you've gone from the queen of wands to the empress right and now you have the knight of swords this is kind of like your guard dog <laughs> but of course it's energetic in nature you have the two of cups and you have the four of cup um four of pentacles now the two of cups look at the mirroring here guys the two of cups is the mage is the minor arcana version of the lovers in my opinion right and then the queen of wands is the minor arcana version of the divine feminine right when we're at least when we're talking twin flames but actually it doesn't even have to be just with twin flames because um wands represent spirituality fire and all that and that's what that's what the divine feminine is. The divine feminine is spirituality, okay? She is the spirit realm. So what does this mean? For this other side, it's almost as, it's like you've you've leveled up to this actual divine feminine embodiment, you know, on the spiritual level, on, on, on you're right, on a spiritual level. And now you have, you're, you're, you're guarded, um, but you're holding yourself, you're holding it down and you are maintaining the balance. You are maintaining the balance of masculine and feminine within. Okay. Wow. That's some progression. I'm actually going to leave. I'm going to put these here. Okay. Now that's, I feel like that's a select that, that, that's a, a message for a select few of you, okay? Potentially those of us that are going through the twin flame situation. Now, when we get into the, the general, this feels like the general message here for everyone, whether you are resonate with the twin flame situation or not. And actually, you don't even have to resonate with the twin flame situation to kind of resonate with this. Because I do, because I do feel like a lot of people went through a very similar situation and they didn't necessarily always resonate or think about it being a twin flame thing. And it's really, that's just a label, you guys, okay? You don't have to, you don't have to identify with that if you don't really want to. You can still, um, learn the lessons or go through the situation that you need to without necessarily being on a twin flame situation uh, a twin flame journey right that's definitely something that I've learned over this time period now for everyone here we have the seven of wands divine wisdom eight of pentacles and the six of swords now divine wisdom is one of a few unique cards in this deck Okay, and divine wisdom talks about the lessons of the universe. What, are, what, what lessons have, am I learning? What lessons have I truly learned? In some ways, you can, I can, I, you can see this card and the meaning of this card as somewhat of a spiritual or a major arcana, Seven of Pentacles. Seven of Pentacles is about the harvest, is about reaping what you've sown. It's about learning or, or recognizing what it is you um, the seeds that you planted in the past, how they have grown, how you have nurtured them to full, to full bloom, and now what you are harvesting. Do you like what you're harvesting? Is this what you went for to begin with? What do you want to harvest next? How do you do that? How do you, how do you get a better harvest or a better yield next time than you did this time? And all of the thought process that go around, go along with that, okay? But this is on a spiritual level. This is about the major arcana cycles that you, that we go through, the major spirit cycles that we go through on a, on a regular basis. What am I learning? What have I learned from this situation? Especially being in, you know, in the new year now, especially after coming out of 2018 and the shitstorm that was, right, for many, many of us. 
we're really trying to take stock and understand how we can have a better yield and a better harvest in the future. We have the seven of wands, which is about boundaries. There's been a lot of new energy about around new boundaries, um, being very protective of ourselves, very protective of who we are, what we want and how we want uh, and, and you know what we're trying to manifest. The eight of pentacles here is the energy of putting in the work towards that next harvest okay and then with the six of swords we are moving forward okay moving uh to calmer waters where a lot of many 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 of us are separating ourselves from the energies of some sort of situation that no longer serves us that's been toxic that's been um just nasty and narcissistic Many of us are getting out of that. And you honestly, you could say that this is a natural, this is the progression from here. So basically, Spirit is giving us a bit of a recap, okay, um, from like the past year up until now so that we can go through this divine wisdom check-in so that we can understand where we have come from and get focused back into where we're going, right? So here you, you have the progression of the twin flame situation or just the progression of the rise of the divine feminine. We'll say it that way because not everybody's going to resonate with the twin flame situation. I do, I am a bit of a twin flame guide, but I'm here for everybody, okay? So we're gonna label, we're gonna instead label this as the rise of the divine feminine. The activation with the queen of wands, the lovers, right? The activation of the Queen of Wands was triggered by the lovers, which then triggered a major transformation with death, okay? From there, that transformation jumped into going from the Queen of Wands, or basically going from the Minor Arcana to the Major Arcana, the Empress, to the Knight of Swords, becoming the warrior, becoming um, the truth seeker. I'm really seeing this Knight of Swords energy as the full truth, nothing but the truth. If you can't get down with the truth, you can't get down with me, and I will sick my guard dog on you. <laughs> Knight of Swords, all right? Four of Pentacles, protecting and, and uh, protecting your investment Investment, protecting your environment, protecting yourself, holding yourself down, grounding yourself. Fours are about um, fours are about stability. Four of Pentacles is like really being stable, secure, and grounded. Two of Cups is the minor arcana version of the lovers, right? So maintaining this balance of masculine and feminine, the union within, in the physical form. And then you move to here. So now we're at this stage where we have these defenses, we have these boundaries, we know exactly, we have a better idea of where our boundaries lie and we have every, uh, every um, intention of enforcing them and you have the divine wisdom to back it up. Yes, with the eight of pentacles, you're doing the work. So this could be finances and career. Um, it, it, could also be continuing to do your own spirit work, right? Six of Swords is the movement from calm, from from rougher waters to calmer waters, um, making and it's it's really being conscious. I really feel like this is conscious movement, really making a conscious effort, a conscious decision to move to somewhere that is not as tumultuous. Because mainly because what I'm getting here is mainly because you understand how the energies of a certain environment, a situation, or certain individuals will affect yours and negatively affect you, adversely affect you, which would then adversely affect your manifestations, correct? We've learned that lesson big time. Finally, we have Moon Child and the Three of Wands. The Moon Child is about the moon cycles. It's about what you're learning through the moon cycles. It's about learn, using, learning to use the moon cycles. We have a depiction of the sun and the moon here. So there's definitely the sun, which is talking about the illumination, which is talking about everything is going to be okay. The biggest thing about the sun, what the sun is saying here, is that you really learned a lot. You've come really quite far. And so now it's time to, in essence, reap what you've spiritually sown here, divine wisdom, okay? And so with the moon child, um, I really see a lot of you working with the moon cycles. We do have a lunar eclipse coming up here. Um, and I, what I feel like for the most part, that is going to bring... That is going to bring um, a lot of what you've been manifesting into fruition here. Three of Wands, 
all right, waiting for the ships to come in, waiting for the return on your investment, okay? Very, very soon, very shortly, I really feel like for many of you, for many of us, um, the manifestations that we've been working towards are really going to be popping off soon, and it really could happen quite suddenly, okay? So let's get into some clarification now. <laughs> We're going to start with the process of the rise of the Divine Feminine here, okay? We're just going to get some clarif clarification on that, and then I'll clarify the rest here. So I'm going to do it in two chunks because I'm going to try and keep this somewhat short. But, you know, spirit, spirit's messages can be pretty long. They have a lot to say. <laughs> All right. One more shuffle here. All righty. Let's see what we've got. So for the rise of the divine feminine, because this is a very much a spiritual recap. And I really feel like the month of January is really this time to recuperate, regenerate, um, reacclimate, reassess, you know, make sure that you're you're doing what it is that you want to be doing. Um, and if you're not at currently how you're going to get towards that, how you're going to start making moves towards that. Yeah. So, for the rise of the Divine Feminine, let's get some clarification, please, Spirit. Well, would you look at that. The Two of Cups came out again. Wow. 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 Look at this. Overall, I'm sorry, underneath the deck, you have the Page of Pentacles. So, what this is saying to me already is that, again, the Page of Pentacles, oh, not again, but I, I say again because um, the Page of Pentacles has been coming out quite a bit lately, and each time it comes out, I see it as a level up, okay? The Page of Pentacles is an energy of honesty, commitment, um, uh, service, uh, integrity, devotion to um de devotion to the cause uh it, it's about a message a messenger uh, uh, because the pages are messengers but i just i really see this as a new level being reached in the physical form and to me especially with the two of cups that is coming out again we have two of cups twice here guys but with the two of cups coming out here again i'm really seeing this as um a, a new physical experience, a new place to start with the balance of masculine and feminine here in check, okay? In fully in place. All right, so we have the Eight of Swords, the Ten of Swords, and the Nine of Wands to go through that. And actually, the funny thing that I was seeing about the Eight of Swords, the Ten of Swords, and then also the Two of Cups, I mean, it's not swords, but the Two of Cups, when you add the Two to the Eight, you get the Ten. So I just thought that was kind of cute. But we have we have the completion of energies of feeling trapped. And this energy of feeling trapped started long before the you know you were activated on your twin flame journey or long before we became actually consciously aware of the divine feminine rising. Okay, this is the 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 history that uh, you know feminine figures or women have gone through, you know, in the last few centuries. Um, with the rise of the patriarchy and the oppression of women and all that kind of stuff, the oppression of feminine energy and the rise and dominance of masculine energy and the twisting of that masculine energy. This is coming to an end here. And now this is coming to an end because you have a balance happening. You have balance and union being sought within instead of needing to be experienced externally. We're starting to learn the lesson that everything starts within and that absolutely will give you a level up. Now, you do have the nine of wands here. So there is still a bit of uh, just keep swimming, uh, the, the, the wounded warrior, battered and bruised. There is also, but the most, the most important keyword when it comes to this, especially in this light, is perseverance not letting go without a fight, not putting, not, not just rolling over, not just giving up. Okay. We're, we're moving on. We've come too far. This page of pentacles is saying to us you, you, that we've come too far on this journey to 
give up now or to slow down now or something like I'm not saying we should be running full speed ahead but you you guys you guys get what I mean okay so now I would like to clarify the second set and I'm not sure if I want to do it split it up into two but I feel like I'm just okay I'm just gonna pull and whatever comes out, we'll see how that lands. Okay, so let, now clarifying the rest of the, the message here, Spirit, please. Ah, the Two of Pentacles that just flew out on the Two of Cups. Okay. Oh, man. All right. Wow. Okay. So underneath the deck, we have the Six of Swords again. So definitely there's a lot of movement. Okay. The, the overall theme of this section of the, the reading is about the movement. It's about moving forward. Now, some of you are juggling. Okay. Some of you are still in the in-between process. You're, you're still kind of flowing with the rise of the, well, we're all flowing with the rise of the divine feminine, but some of you are still going through this transition here with the death card. Death is in reverse. So that can mean either you're going through the transition is in process or it's blocked in some way, or you're approaching it really, it could be. So maybe you're approaching the, the transition now, but I really feel like with the two of pentacles falling out here the way it has, it's fallen sideways and it's in between both sides of the reading. I feel like some of you are oscillating back and forth between fully making this transition and still going through the process. And that's not a bad thing, okay? We have. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> we have the Knight of Swords again with the Empress again. All right. So look, there's the guard dog. That's really funny. But this is all about communication. This is all about truth and about honesty. The Divine Feminine is very much in a position right now where she's ready to start communicating with like-minded individuals. She's ready to start finding her peers, to start finding her soul family, um, to start finding the people that are really gonna vibe with her, that, gonna help, that can help her spread this narrative of unconditional love, divine support, of being, um, uh, of being balanced within the masculine and the feminine and the healing of the masculine and the feminine, okay? Um, and if you, and again, I say this as her dog, guard dog because if you do not vibe with that, that's fine. But don't come around her. Don't come around trying to start no shit. Don't start no shit. Won't be no shit. Like she, like she ain't trying to pop off. But you give her the right chance. If you give her the right opportunity, she will. Keep in mind, the Empress is the Queen of Queens. So the Queen of Swords is in there somewhere, right? And she's not afraid to let that to let her out. Mm -hmm. We also have the Nine of Cups, the Seven of Pentacles, and Justice. Now looky here, y'all. I was just talking about that seven of pentacles energy, wasn't I? Okay. Now these three cards did fall in reverse slightly. Like it, it was, it was slightly reversed, you know? So I'm going to take it as for some of you, this, it, this has to do with like for some people here that are still oscillating back and forth, you're still kind of juggling. You're not quite sure. You don't quite know. Um, but, or, or you're just strictly going through, still going through the transformation. Um, this is what you have to look forward to. Seven of Pentacles, reaping what you've sown. Now, this does feel, this feels a little bit heavy. I'm not going to lie, this feels a little bit heavy, this Seven of Swords. But it's only heavy because of the weight of the responsibility that comes with it. Understanding where you were in the past, understanding where you want to or need to go in the future, and understanding the effort and the work that it's going to take to get there, okay? This is not to scare anybody, but ultimately, you have to be able to recognize acknowledge this excuse me acknowledge this and be willing to take it on and if you are then justice will be served and your wishes will be fulfilled why because you're doing the work with the eight of pentacles and this doesn't mean you have to be doing all kinds of crazy physical labor but what is one of the main things that we're learning right now especially on the side of the divine feminine keeping your mind in check okay keeping your vibration in check okay that's that's where the real work comes it comes in wow this is a really powerful message yeah <laughs> yeah that song has popped up in my, and popped into my head again i can see clearly now the rain is gold <laughs> 
that's really cool, you guys. We really are coming to a, a new level of awareness. And um, if you're feeling super confident all of a sudden, or if you've just grown into that lately, keep it up. Do not let anybody dim your shine for any reason. I'm trying to get the lighting here right. Okay. So now I'm going to get into the oracle section and we're going to get some animal, animal oracle guidance. And then I'm going to close the deck with the crystal mandala. Excuse me, close the reading with the crystal mandala deck. All right, one more shuffle here. Alrighty. So, best message, please, spirit, from the animal spirit guides. There it is, right there. Otter. Oh, that is beautiful. Underneath is frog. Oh, my goodness. I love otter. Okay, here we go. And then also, I am going to read frog, too, but we're going to start with otter. Unobstructed joy playfulness, contentment. Perhaps the most joyful creature within the animal spirit deck, the otter represents absolute bliss. Otter energy is the playfulness of a child available to us at any age. They have a giddiness and reverence for life itself without the presence of doubt, worry, or skepticism. Imagine yourself with a little more otter energy. What would life look like? What would it take to bring you there? The otter card begs these questions and wants to transport us to that precious place as soon as possible. The celebration awaits. When in balance, otter is full of love and needs nothing. When out of balance, otter is gloomy, sighs, and makes silly excuses. To bring into balance, one must have a dance party or a celebration. And it's so funny because this is exactly what I was talking about with the energies of keeping your, your mind and your thoughts in check. Um, adopting the playfulness of a child, not worrying about doubts or fears. You know, that's where we really need to stay. That's where our vibration needs to stay. It doesn't mean you don't have work to do. It doesn't mean you don't have responsi responsibilities to handle. But there's no reason to sabotage yourself by trying to by, by trying to accomplish all of this while staying in a low vibration. It's only going to make it that much more difficult for you to surmount the challenges, right? Okay. So finally, I want to get one card from the Crystal Mandala deck here. Alrighty. Best message, closing message, please, Spirit, for today, January 14th, 2019. There it is. Underneath the deck we have Searing Presence. Oh, I didn't read. I didn't read Frog. Okay, so wait. I'm going to. Ooh, okay. So our message is Passion of the Lion Heart. Actually, you know what? No, I'm just going to stick with what I have here. All right, card number 39. Goddess Sekhmet and Fire Agate. Ooh, Sekhmet. Passion of the liar, Lion Heart. And Sekhmet, and Sekhmet is like a goddess of destruction. She's fierce. Like, talk about Queen B, don't take no shit, honey. She don't take no, she doesn't even know the meaning of taking shit. <laughs> okay, card number 39, Passion of the Lion Heart. We bring you the empowerment of Passion of the Lion Heart. Through passion, you will dedicate yourself with an intensity and discipline that may surprise you. Passion is love activated. It is energy that moves you from within and empowers you to act in the way, excuse me, act in the world in ways you would not otherwise dare to even consider. Passion gives you strength, plugs you into the eternal energy of sacred fire, and generates the ability to accomplish tasks once you once may not have believed possible. With great passion, there can be great pain. The heart that loves, wild and open, is also the heart that can feel disappointment and doubt most keenly. 
The empowerment of the lion heart strengthens your heart to recover from any pain through the power of courage, commitment, and bold, loving devotion to what matters most to you. Um, I'm going to read this part. This oracle comes to you with a message. Trust your passion and your heart. Believe in what moves you most. The desires in your heart are there by divine design. They are as they are meant to be. You are here to further your journey of trusting in your heart. Whether that means you have been a raging divine lion for many years or are just starting to wonder if you can turn your quiet truths into a mighty roar, you are being invited to go deeper into the passion of your heart and live your divine purpose with courage and conviction. If your heart is tired, broken, overwhelmed, despairing, doubting, or suffering from compassion fatigue, which you know you still care, where you know you still care, but you can't summon the energy to feel anything at the moment, this oracle brings you comfort. Rest, heal, replenish. Your passion is not faded, but you must give yourself the time you need to recover from your remarkable exertions. Allow your passion to motivate you, not burn you out. Take the time you need. Allow the divine to heal you and know your shining lion heart shall burn bright with the energy again soon. And it's so funny because I personally have been going through a situation recently um, where I recognize the, the lion, the spiritual lion within me. I mean, also I have Leo in my chart, whether it's Western astrology where it's my moon or it's Eastern astrology where it's my rising sign. I'm very much... A Leo native okay and um, my tendency to roar when I've been provoked enough has really come to the forefront in my mind and I've been working very hard to accept that and not push that away any longer because you know there are many in the world that would get, want you to not do that to not stir the pot to not be vocal to not be loud to not you know to not be a whistleblower even and we can't have that any longer and so the, the fact that this came out here right now is really perfect and that actually has been the focus of my healing over the last like week or so is me being vocal and not being ashamed of that because it's not like i'm going out here trying to make trouble but if people are being abused if i'm being abused there's only so much that you can take you're not going to stay silent forever Right. There's a time and a place for everything. And when and everything has its right, it's divine timing. So even though it may seem like this was inopportune or whatnot, if you really look down, down deep to it, you might see that actually the perfect the, the timing was actually kind of perfect. Anyway, I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, uh, please go ahead and follow me on Instagram at divine underscore conversations. I am running an Instagram sale, 20% off general freestyle readings for the followers. So go ahead and follow me and, uh, and shoot me a DM and I will get you guys all set up. With that, other than that, we do have happy hour tonight. I know I mentioned yesterday that I wasn't going to be able to do happy hour tonight, but then my schedule changed up a little bit. So I will be doing happy hour tonight, guys. So I look forward to seeing you guys then. Yeah. Other than that, have a fantastic day. And I look forward to connecting with you again very, very soon. Yeah. Take care. Mwah! Bye.